Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. And today we're going to talk about how your comfort zone keeps you stuck in the rut of stagnation, settling for less than you're capable of, less than you're called to in your life. This actually was inspired by a couple conversations I had today. One of the people I talked to uh, she was in the business for 18 years or had been in the business for 18 years and she'd been stuck at the same level for the last three and a half years, making about 250 K. And she was concerned because she'd had about, you know, 10 years left in her career at the time we talked and she was wanting to improve, but she wasn't wanting to do things like cold calling, groveling for business. A lot of her proactive methods that she thought were required to grow a business were things she didn't really want to do, uh, things that she felt like she'd grown, grown out of, things that she's felt like, you know, she did when she was early in her career, but now she was feeling like she was above that. And so she'd been flatlining at about 250K for the last three years. And as you probably are thinking, hey, that's decent income. Why would she bother even want to change it? Well, the problem is she'd been stagnating and regressing and she was looking for a way to expand and grow and she was worried about going backwards. She'd lost it all years and years prior and she knows what it feels like to have to start from scratch with nothing and live on peanuts and have creditors chasing her and she didn't wanna go back there. So she had this fear of regressing, this fear of going backwards, but also this fear of expansion and progression that required change, that required her to step out of her comfort zone. And to make a long story short, we uncovered that for her to step up her game, she really wanted to make half a million plus per year, but she wasn't quite ready for that because she told me it's not a must to create that breakthrough. It's more of a should. So it's kind of like the overweight person who comes to the personal trainer and says, I'd love to get in shape. I'm, I'm in decent shape, but I'm not in great shape. I got a few jelly rolls here and there. I'd really get like to get ripped and be in the best shape of my life. And the personal trainer says, well, I got it and I appreciate that's your intention and your desire. Let me ask you this, is creating that breakthrough in your health a must or a should? And that person says, ah, it's, it's more of a should than a must. You can see the rub, right? It's like the chance of that person ever doing what it takes to consistently train enough to be able to get that outcome is slim to none. It's not gonna happen because we don't get our shoulds in life, we get our must. Whatever we must achieve, whatever we must accomplish, that's what we achieve because human beings tend to take the path of least resistance. And then the other person I talked to today, he'd been in the game for 40 years. Yeah, four decades in the game. The most he'd ever make, made is 70K. And that was like four years ago. And he's been sliding down the mountain ever since, making like, 40, 50 K, maybe, uh, you know, 40 K net after business expenses and taxes. He wants to grow his business. He wants to expand, but he keeps telling himself things in his head that make him continue to spin his wheels. Because at the end of the day, I asked him, what's really at stake in you creating that breakthrough? He said, there's nothing at stake. In other words, he wants to create expansion. He wants to create progress. He wants to do better. But when asked what's really at stake in you creating that breakthrough, he's telling himself, I'm not doing too bad. It's okay. I'm cool either way. What's the likelihood he's ever going to create a breakthrough if he continues to tell himself there's not really much at stake? I'm kind of cool either way. Chances are he's not going to, right? Because if he doesn't have that white hot fire burning desire to step out of his comfort zone on a consistent basis and do what it takes to strain those muscles, burn those muscles so he can get the pain, which gets the gain, chances are he'll never get the gain and he'll continue to stay stuck in that rut of stagnation. Think about that for a moment. 40 years, most you've ever made, 70K. There's nothing wrong with making 70K, but this guy had experience, acumen, expertise, talent, all kinds of ability and capacity, and yet he wasn't tapping it. Why? Because he was staying stuck in his comfort zone. Same thing with that lady I mentioned earlier. She's capable of doing half a million, three quarters of a million, a million plus. She's capable of expanding and growing, kicking ass and taking names, chewing bubble gum, crushing it, living the dream and yet she's stagnating. The thing about stagnation is things that stagnate tend to rot. If you're not growing, you're dying. 
and where the juice is in life is in progress, is in expansion, is in growth, not in stagnating and sitting on your laurels and collecting dust and growing moss. That's not where the juice of life is. The juice of life is in conquering new mountains, not sliding down old ones. So how does your comfort zone keep you stuck in a rut of stagnation? I'm going to cover a few things that will highlight how you can avoid these landmines because these truly are the mental, emotional, spiritual landmines that will steal and kill and destroy your success and your progress, your legacy, your posterity, and your growth and the thrill of victory in your life. So these are the things I want you to be aware of so you can steer clear of them and so you can be with the champion mindset, always growing, always always expanding, always conquering new territory in your life instead of trying to sit on your laurels and live in fear and live in defense. We want you not only living in defense, but living in offense and expanding. You can't have both. You can't just live in defense and spend and, and expect to have offense expansion. It's not going to happen. You're not going to see a hockey team win just by playing merely defense. You have to also play offense. Shout out to my man, Michael Chabot, who through his leadership and his extraordinary inspirational talent as a coach for his hockey team, young uh, boys on his hockey team, they won a championship. These are young boys that before hardly knew what it felt like to win a game. But through his leadership and through his inspiration and leading by example, by the uh, inspiration in his heart that was ignited out of the darkness of losing his daughter at age 14 due to complications of the flu. He came through that dark night of the soul and rose up and stepped out of his comfort zone, even though he was grieving for a whole year and just wanted to lick his wounds, stick his tail between his legs and feel sorry for himself his whole life because grieving was just the place that was natural for him because he was in such sorrow. But he decided to rise up out of his comfort zone, decided to get out of the muck and mire of feeling sorry for himself and focus on others and serve others and make a difference and use his pain to help other people gain and make a difference in other people's lives through his challenge and his pain and his darkness. And the depth of his darkness became the possibility for the height of his light. And because he decided to step out of his comfort zone, he's been able to do great things in his business, great thing as a th things as a leader, as a general manager, uh, as in a mortgage professional arena, as well as doing great things in the hockey arena as a coach. So shout out to Michael Chabot. Super proud of you, brother. And that's the power of you rising up in your comfort zone, man. So kudos to you. Now you get to have that formative opportunity to change these young men's lives. These men that now, young men that have a taste of victory and success, not just by having luck and, you know, having the puck roll in the right way uh, for a few games, but they're, you're molding their souls. You're molded, molding their character. You're training them on what it looks like to be a winner in life. They're going to be able to own that for the rest of their lives because of what you're doing in them and through them. So I just, Congratulate you. Kudos to you, brother. Super proud of you. And I love what you stand for and what you do. That wasn't planned, by the way. I just had this uh, idea based on his story that just came to my mind that reminds me that it's important for you guys, even when the depths of your soul are really being challenged in the darkest places, the darkest seasons of your life, there's an opportunity to rise out of that comfort zone of your sorrow and to conquer and to have that sorrow become an opportunity to soar, to become all that you're called to become. And sometimes it's tough, really tough, as it was for Michael. But that's an opportunity each and every one of us has when we're going through the night, the dark night of the soul, to remember that it doesn't last forever and that God's molding our character, molding our soul so that we can have the strength and we can have the virtue and we can have the character to fulfill our calling. And Michael is a great example of that. So how do we stay stuck in our comfort zone? We stay stuck in there first and foremost by softening the problem. It ain't so bad. I'm doing better than most. I'm making 250K per year. And so we soften the problem. Even when we're making 70K per year like that other gentleman, what's the state? Not that much. I'm, I'm retiring in two to three years regardless. 
So we soften the problem, kind of like the fat guy who tells the personal trainer, I'm not that fat, I'm just big bone. No, you're freaking fat. And until and unless you get real with yourself and tell yourself the truth that you're fat, you're never going to solve the problem. You're not, never going to do what it takes to fix it. So softening the problem is one of the ways that we coddle our comfort zone and soften the blow of reality and cope. It's a coping mechanism. We tell ourselves lies so that we can feel better about ourselves. So we can coddle our inner child and feel better about the situation. And tell, instead of telling ourselves the truth, and as the old saying goes, the truth shall set you free, but first it's probably gonna piss you right off. That's the Dorn Aldana edition. So softening the problem is one of the ways we stay stuck in our comfort zone. Because if we can get it, tell ourselves it ain't so bad, we're just going to allow ourselves to stay stuck there and we're not going to do anything to change it. So that's one of the things you want to steer clear of, telling yourself it ain't that bad. If you're doing good, guess what? Good is the mortal enemy of great. And if you're doing good, that's a great way to stay stuck in the stagnation, the rut of stagnation. And stagnation always leads to regression. If you're not growing, you're dying. Stagnation leads to compromise, complacency, which leads to neglect, which leads to drifting, which leads to sliding down the mountain and regressing. So don't think it's such a small little thing. It's a little thing that's like cancer. It might be just one little cancer cell. But if you let it run amok in your mind and heart, it will take you out. So be wary of softening the problem. Tell yourself the truth. I'm fat and I need to get in the freaking gym and I need to eat some salad. Tell yourself the truth. Don't lie to yourself. The truth shall set you free. The next thing that keeps us stuck in the muck and mire of mediocrity, confined to our comfort zone and the prison that represents our comfort zone, is a sense of entitlement. So for this lady today, she was telling me how she doesn't want to have to go back and grovel for business and she had literally, she was spending zero time on proactive lead generation, zero. All of her leads were coming in through path, passive methods, client referrals, repeat transactions with clients, realtors. And so she'd gotten used to picking that low hanging fruit and drifting instead of driving, wondering why she's stagnating because she has no proactive lead generation, no proactive prospecting. And she had a sense of entitlement that that's for people who are new. That's for people who are experienced or inexperienced. And she felt like any proactive methods were groveling for business and she just was not into it. So she associated being proactive and being out there drumming up business proactively as way beneath her. I don't want to have to grovel for business. I don't want to have to do that. I did that years ago. Uh, that's beneath me right? Notice the sense of entitlement. If you have that kind of mindset, it's the beginning of the end for progress in your business. It's the beginning of the end for growth in your business. Because if you're not driving your business, you're drifting. If you're not proactive, you're reactive. If you're not going out there and pursuing new business, guess what? You're drifting, you're stagnating, you're regressing, and you're going backwards. Simple as that. There is no in-between. So that sense of entitlement is pride. Pride is the beginning of the fall, the Bible says. Before a fall comes pride. So you want to keep yourself agile, keep yourself humble, keep yourself limber, keep yourself malleable to be able to always want to be pursuing growth, expansion, progress. That's where the juice is. You know what that requires? Humility. Pretend you're starting from scratch again this month. Have that same fire, have that same zest, have that same excitement, have that same commitment. As long as you continue to have that sense of, hey, I'm starting from scratch every month. I wanna keep growing, keep expanding. I never want to sit on my laurels. I never want to start growing moss because I know that's the beginning of the end of my growth and my joy because all the joy and passion in life and, and the sense of happiness in life comes from progress. Progress only comes when you pursue it. 
It doesn't come to you. It's not like the field of dreams. If you build it, it will not come. You have to pursue it every day. Success doesn't come just because you want it. It comes because you pursue it, because you continually grind, not from a sense of lack, limitation, and scarcity. Grinding is a bad word. I don't even want to use that word because grinding insinuates that you're white knuckling and that it's hard. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be fun. It can be in flow, but it does have to be intentional. The cost for success is kind of like you're not owning success. You're renting and the dues are due every damn day. You can't buy success. You rent it. And the rental dues are due every single day. So there is no sense of entitlement here, guys. Keep ourselves humble and continually pursue progress. That's the name of the game. That's the mindset of a champion. The next thing that I want to bring to your attention is what keeps us stuck in stagnation and allows the seduction of the comfort zone to suck us into its vortex is letting fear stop us. So for example, this lady that I was talking about earlier today, she wanted to grow, she wanted to expand, but she had fear around getting out of her comfort zone, getting out of her office, getting out from in front of her computer screen, getting out from the minutia of pushing paper all day because that's comfortable. She had a fear associated with going out there and the possibility of rejection and the possibility of people saying no and the possibility of failure. And so she distracted herself with the inevitable and incessant dera derailments, distractions, the bright, shiny objects. She was squirreling all day, every day, chasing the bright, shiny objects and being bogged down with the minutia, which, of course, would drain her battery because she didn't like doing it. It was not something that made her feel fulfilled, fired up and excited about life. It drained her. It's like it, suck it stuck its fangs into her neck and just drained her of her joy. But it was comfortable. So it was a comfortable suck because it was what she was used to. Most people will stay with the evil that they know instead of the unknown evil they don't know. And so they allow the fangs to remain stuck in their neck, sucking the joy out of their life every single day. Don't let that be you. Let other people live small lives, but not you. Let other people let their own fear stop them from stepping out and claiming new territory and new expansion in their lives and claiming new adventures in their lives, but not you. Don't let fear stop you. You know what fear is, is false evidence appearing real. The more you pursue that which you fear, the more you're going to realize it's getting smaller and you're getting bigger and it's under your feet. It's the only thing in the universe that the closer you move towards it, the smaller it becomes. So whatever you fear, that's what's holding you back from expansion. If you think about it, all that you desire, think about it like this, your current life right now, your income, your lifestyle, and your life as it is right now is your comfort zone. It's all inside of your comfort zone. And all the prosperity, the fulfillment, the adventure, the fun, the exhilaration, and the kick-ass life you want to create is all outside of your comfort zone. And on the edge of your comfort zone, there's something called a terror barrier or a fear barrier. Anytime you go for your dreams and your goals and you go out to conquer new territory, it's scary. It's like the Israelites in the Bible who go for the promised land. All of a sudden, they see these big, scary giants. Fear starts to creep in. That's the terror barrier. And as long as you let those giants, those so-called giants and fear stop you, you're never going to claim the promised land flowing with milk and honey. So you got to realize that that fear is a natural process of your growth process. And you conquering requires you to get out of your comfort zone. You can have your comfort zone or you can conquer, but you can't have both. So the mediocre majority let that fear stop them. They bump up against that tear barrier. They stick their tail between their legs. They buckle like cheap lawn furniture and they give up and they go back to the same old, same old. And they settle for a second best life. Instead of saying, screw it, let's do it. If I'm going to conquer, I can't afford to live in my comfort zone. If I want to claim my dream, i got to be willing to discipline myself to say, screw it, let's do it. Feel the fear and do it anyways. 
And the more you do that, you the more you get comfortable being uncomfortable. And the more you have a fiber and fabric and rhythm of your life of feeling the fear, doing it anyways, feeling the fear, doing it anyways. And you're constantly conquering new territory, climbing new mountains and constantly growing new muscle that allows you to be stronger, better, sharper, wiser. That's the way of the champion. And that's what I want for you. But you can't achieve that unless you want your dream more than you want your comfort. Because the moment you go for your dream, your dream and your comfort zone are colliding. And that's where that terror barrier stops most people right in their tracks. And if you want to achieve greatness, you can't afford to stay stuck in the muck and mire of coddling your comfort zone, sticking your tail between your legs and playing it safe. You can either kick ass and take names and prosper. You can play safe. You can't have both. So the champion does not let fear stop them. The champion says, I'm feeling the fear. That means I'm on the right track. That means I'm onto something because that means I'm playing a big game. If you're not feeling fear on a regular basis, you're not playing a big enough game. Simple as that. Reminds me a story of a guy who moved to a new home. And he's unpacking his boxes and arranging things in their locations. And all of a sudden, he hears this terrible, eerie sound. It sounds like a whining dog. And it just keeps whining and whining and whining day after day after day. Next thing you know, seven days later, he just gets absolutely fed up and snaps, decides to find out once and for all what the heck's going on with this dog, confront the issue head on. So he marches over around the block, comes around the corner, sees the house where he, see, where he hears this uh, terrible sound coming from, and he hears the dog whining on the front porch with this miserable look on its face. Next to the porch was a green lawn. On the lawn was a guy on a chair reading a newspaper. He marches up to the man. He says, hello, sir. Is that your dog? He says, yes. I've been listening to that, your dog whining for the last week. What on earth is wrong with your dog? He said, well, he's sitting on a nail. Are you kidding me? Why doesn't he get off the nail? Well, because it hurts, but it doesn't hurt that bad. You see, some of you, you're hurting, but you're softening the problem. You're telling you to yourself the BS lie. It's not that bad. You're getting other people enrolled in that. By saying, hey, other people are doing this. I'm doing better than most. And so you're getting them enrolled as well. And you're coddling your comfort zone saying, I'm better. Than, I know I, I used to do that stuff before. I'm not going to go and conquer, you know, do all this extra work. You know, I'm better than that. I don't want to be groveling for business. And you're letting your fear stop you saying, hey, you know what? I'm not doing so bad. It's kind of cool. I'm kind of cool either way. And so it hurts, but it doesn't hurt that bad. And as long as you allow yourself to be asleep to how much is stealing your joy, stealing your peace, stealing your power, stealing the thrill and victory of life, you're going to continue to sit on that nail, whining, sniveling, complaining, and settling for a second best life. And the clients I work with, they're not willing to go another day like that. Not one day, not one more day sitting on the nail. Not one more day in stagnation. Not one more day settling for a second best life. Not one more day. But at the end of the day, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't what? Force it to drink. That's why I only work with thirsty horses. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, Dorn, I needed this, man. I needed a proverbial kick in the butt. Thank you for rattling my cage. Thank you for putting a blowtorch under my butt. I realize I've been softening the problem. I realize I've been settling for second best. I realize I've been letting entitlement syndrome steal my passion for pursuing progress. Enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done with that. If you're in that place, I can help you. If you're in that place, you're ready for progress. If you're in that place, you're ready for your breakthrough. And if that's the case, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood in your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. If we can help you create that breakthrough, by all means, I will show you how to create that breakthrough with the proven plan, shortest path to the cash without messing around, doing it the hard way. And if not, for whatever reason, I can't help you, I'll be the first to advise you to that. And either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. We'll have some fun along the way. 
But this call is about clarity. It's about having a real conversation and leading you to the truth of what it really takes to creating a breakthrough in your life and your business. So if indeed that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, I, advantage, I, I invite you to take advantage of this complimentary breakthrough call with either me or one of my consultants. Go ahead and book it at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It doesn't look like it's showing up on the screen properly. So let me try without all the capitals. Maybe that'll help out. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And uh, let's get on the phone and see how we can help you guys. Because at the end of the day, if you're not getting the results you want, if you keep doing what you've always been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So let's get on the phone. Let's talk about what it's really going to take to create a breakthrough. Let's see if we can help you. And uh, let's, have a, let's have a meaningful conversation to lead you to the truth about what it's going to take to have 2020 to be your absolute best year yet. You game? If so, book the call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. You need to be on 100% commission. You eat what you kill, no safety net. You need to be a residential mortgage professional who is wanting to increase your income by at least $100,000 or more in the next 12 months or less. If that is indeed you, book the call. It'll be one of the most transformative life changing, life transforming breakthrough calls you've had in a very long time, if not ever. So again, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. This is mortgagemarketingcoach.com, Doran Aldana, coming at you with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for hanging with me. Again, we seek progress, not perfection. So go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you will get massive results. Talk to you soon. Peace.